So, as of this recording, Gen Con 2020 has been cancelled, much as I suspected when I did my earlier review in the year of that a Dragonlance no of the second Dragonlance novel, uh, Dragons of Winter Night. So, I am holding off on doing my theme month for our tabletop role-playing, instead just continuing with my plan of just putting out related content throughout the year as I come to it. So, this time I'm reviewing a work of non-fiction, specifically the book Playing at the World by John Peterson, which covers not only how Dungeons & Dragons came to be, but delves deeply into the influences of the game as well, and how in turn those influences fueled the game and what came later. The book is basically divided into a handful of chunks. We get the two big influences of the game, fantasy literature and miniatures wargaming, along with the concept of role-playing itself, before getting into how all these things combine and lead to Dungeons and Dragons. With Miniatures Wargaming, the book gets into a way deeper dive than it could have possibly anticipated, going all the way back to early war games from Prussia in the 1800s, or Kriegspiel, before moving on to the games played with tin figures in the UK prior to World War I, like H.G. Wells' Little Wars, all the way through the rise of the, fantasy of the uh, American wargaming scene through the game diplomacy and related fanzines. On the other side, through fantasy literature, we get a similar focus on late 18th, um, well, late 19th century more, and 20th century fantasy literature, going through Lord Dunsany to Edgar Rice Burroughs and uh, Robert E. Howard, before we get to Tolkien, and also getting into how these authors, with perhaps the possible exception of Tolkien, were relatively obscure when D&D started. For the idea of role-playing, this also builds off of fantasy literature before getting into Arthurian stories and imitation Arthurian events in the UK before getting into collaborative storytelling and, eventually, the SCA in the US. And this also gets into some basic biographical information about Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax before this all comes together, but not in the form that you would think. Instead, this all comes together through a type of game known as a Bronstein. Bronstein is basically a collaborative Napoleonic war game based around a fictional German town of that name. In addition to the two players that you have controlling the various armies like you normally get in a war game, you have a bunch of additional players involved playing various roles within the town, from the mayor, the bishop, the chair of the university, to the banker, all these characters having their own personal objectives which are secret from others, and their actions will have an impact on the actions that the other two commanders could perform. This in turn led to a variety of other games being created in similar scenarios, with different rules being used on the wargame sides of things, from a politically unstable Latin American Republic, to an old West town, and then finally, to a fantasy Bronstein run by Dave Arneson called Blackmore. Blackmore used, for its wargaming rules, a fairly new uh, medieval wargame called Chainmail, written by Gary Gygax. This game, in turn, based on uh, Gygax's affinity for swords and sorcery novels, included rules in the back and an appendix for single-character actions, like sm small, single-unit skirmish kind of things for the exploration of temples and ruins and so on, which Arneson used, in turn, to have his players explore the dungeons beneath Blackmoor. However, outside of the wargame rules themselves, there were no real hard and fast set of rules, just a collection of rulings that were shared, or not, between various rulings that referees who were run, running and organizing these games. Just a you know, variety of sets of notes, haphazardly stuck in binders, folders, notebooks, you name it. Arneson had been in correspondence with Gygax, Gygax since they were both nearby in the Great Lakes area. They had met and collaborated, ultimately, in the creation of the original version of Dungeons & Dragons, which leads to the final part of the book, the creation of D&D, the evolution of the rules, and how the fan base for D&D grew and evolved, and in turn, how they iterated in the concept, both in to other tabletop role-playing games, as well as myriad house rules, and that sort of thing. All this is structured very well in the book, with each bit building on the other. It's just that, if I don't give one complaint about the book, it's not like, it, it's reading like, like reading a textbook. It's a dry read. It's incredibly insightful and educational, and it taught me a lot about how D&D &D came to be, but it's something of a rough sit. 
But honestly, that's actually kind of something of a bummer because the book is a tremendous work of scholarship. If someone was to come up to me and say, hey, I'm doing a documentary about tabletop role-playing games, what book should I read? I would shove this book in their arms along with all four volumes of Designers and Dragons, which is a future review, and send them to talk to John Peterson and Shannon, Shannon Applecline for more information and a list of other people to interview, along with, in the case of uh, Peterson, some primary documents to peruse as well. If you want to know about the history of games, this is a must-read. It's also a very important read, I would say. There's been a long holy war, for lack of a better term, within the RPG community when it comes to the roles of Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax in the creation of D&D. The Gygaxians versus the Arso Arsonians? Arnesonians? I guess, for lack of a better term. The general vibe of these two camps is that the person that they chose to back is the one who really did all the heavy lifting when it comes to D&D, &D, and the other person contributed nothing of value. What playing at the world makes clear is both camps are wrong. Gygax and Arneson are kind of like the Lennon and McCartney of Dungeons and Dragons. Each one made a very important, very significant role in the creation of D&D. &D. Gygax wrote the rules for Chainmail. Arneson adapted them to the to Blackmore and the Bronstein framework. Um, and then, in turn, Gygax took Arneson's notes, which are which would be described as kind of haphazard and all over the place, and turns them into basically three pamphlets and stick in a box, put on a store shelf and, sh and sell, and anyone can pick up those three books, go through them, and learn to play Dungeons and Dragons. More or less. And all this with the, that person hypothetically having never played a war game before, having no connection of Gygax's, to Gygax's or Arneson's uh, tabletop gaming community, or indeed anyone who's ever taken part in a Bronstein before. It allows the game to endure out and spread outside of an immediate social circle. What Arneson had was something that has to be spread orally. It has You have to be inducted into the mysteries. What um, Gygax did is turn it into a thing where you want to play D&D? Here you go. Everything it needs in this box. And that the importance of that can't be understated. Like, technical writing is a thing that you don't know that it's how, how difficult it is or the level of work that somebody's put into something or how important something is when until somebody screws up. And taking disparate notes and turning them into a cohesive game that you can teach people is the essence of technical writing. And it is... And the fact that basically Gary was able to, to take Dave's notes, put them into something where anyone can sell... where, where I guess the, the initial print run sold out, then the one after that, and the one after that, and the one after that, and ultimately it transformed into a thing... That is a global multimedia phenomenon that changed multiple media from novels to television to um, comics to video games. Video games didn't even exist at the time that uh, Dungeons and Dragons came out. In spite of all of the, they made all these significant changes into in society. Um, is that, that that can't be underestimated in terms of its importance. But he's also adapting Arneson's note. So Arneson, if Arneson hadn't been involved, I mean, arguably someone else might have thought, hey, let's do a Conan Bronstein or let's do a Arthurian Bronstein or a Tolkien Bronstein. But it's the combination of the two of basically Arneson creating the Blackmore campaign um, running it for his friends and other, and with more and more people who are brought into the game, putting it through its paces and going th and creating all these notes, and that which then Gygax is able to distill 
into this wonderful game. That's really darn impressive, and I think it and it is something which both of them deserve full and equal credit credit for. So as this recording, playing at the world is available through most through, through well your all your fine booksellers. Um, I will have links in the show notes for where you can pick it up from Amazon. And picking up anything through those links, honestly, will um, support help support the show. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>